Hey guys, this video is about the Cushing syndrome and the dexamethasone test, a topic the USMLE absolutely loves. And I assure you that by the end of this video, you'd have mastered the concept so well that you'll never get a single question wrong. So let's begin. So, in the hypothalamus, you have a peptide hormone called the CRH hormone that gets released in responses to stress. This hormone then goes on to act on the anterior pituitary and stimulates the release of ACTH. ACTH in turn travels to the zona fasciculata of the adrenal cortex and releases cortisol. Now cortisol is great guys, I mean it has a variety of functions, it increases your glucose levels when you need it to, it has a permissive action between norepinephrine and alpha-1 receptors, so it raises your blood pressure when you want, but you still don't want too much of it. And that's when the negative feedback comes in. Then the body realizes that there is an excess cortisol in the system. It negatively inhibits, or it just inhibits, the ACTH and the CRH, and thereby reducing the, decrease of the, reducing the secretion of cortisol from the adrenals. But what happens when your body is not able to do it? What happens when your body has an excess amount of cortisol and is not able to control it? So when it cannot control that excess cortisol, it ends up being the Cushing syndrome. So Cushing syndrome is basically an excess amount of cortisol in your system. And it presents with a variety of symptoms like hypertension, moon fasces, which is basically excess fat around your face, abdominal stria, osteoporosis, amenorrhea, trunkal obesity. All that indicates an increased cortisol, which you can you know, diagnose with a 24-hour urine analysis or a midnight salivary control test. So now we have to figure out what's causing this increase in cortisol. The first most common cause is an exogenous glucocorticoid use. So somebody who's taking a lot of steroids to curb an inflammation from a chronic infection, so that person will have an excess cortisol in their blood. But what will the cortisol do to the levels of ACTH? It will obviously inhibit it. So now that you have a lot of cortisol coming from outside in your blood, your pituitary thinks it no longer needs to secrete ACTH to stimulate the adrenals. But because the adrenals are no longer getting stimulated by ACTH, they will start becoming smaller and smaller because they are no longer needed. And that's why they develop something called bilateral adrenal atrophy. So in somebody who has been taking steroids from outside, will have an increased cortisol because they're taking it. That will lead to a decreased ACTH because of the negative feedback and bilateral adrenal atrophy. That's the first cause. But what happens if you have a tumor in the adrenal gland, an adenoma, hyperplasia, or carcinoma? It's the same thing. In these people, what ha I'm sorry, I'm referring to them as people because it's easy to just you know say that but doesn't really have to be anybody. I don't want anybody to get it. So yeah, so if somebody has a tumor in the adrenal gland, that person will keep on secreting cortisol. It will just come out and out and out. But that will also have the same effect on ACTH because the pituitary again is normal. It will be like, oh, okay, you have cortisol. I don't need to produce any ACTH. So it will decrease the ACTH stimulation on the adrenals. So the tumor, adrenal, the adrenal with the tumor, I'm sorry, that one will still be producing a lot of cortisol, but the other one will no longer do anything because it won't get stimulated by ACTH. Hence, it will get atrophied. So these people have increased cortisol, decreased ACTH, just like the exogenous, but atrophy of the uninvolved adrenal. So what happens if the problem is not here, but here? and you have a pituitary adenoma, which is secreting a lot of ACTH, unregulated. This in fact is called the Cushing disease, which is the most common endogenous cause of Cushing syndrome. The way I remember it is that pituitary gland is an organ, organs get diseases, and that's why it's called Cushing disease. I mean, I don't know if that works, but it works for me. And so in this case, you will have a lot of ACTH being released. That will act on the adrenal glands, which are normal, and that will get stimulated by ACTH and keep releasing cortisol. Now, in this case, then what you will see is increased cortisol due to increased ACTH, so bilateral adrenal hyperplasia. Both the adrenals will get super activated. But what if 
it's none of these. What if your pituitary is fine, your adrenals are fine, you're not really taking any steroids, but you still end up with a shit ton of cortisol in your blood? Well, then it's coming from somewhere else, somewhere sinister. In that case, it's a paraneoplastic or ectopic ACTH release. And that's mostly seen in two main cases. That's a small cell lung cancer and carcinoid in bronchi bronchioles. So paraneoplastics are basically just like pituitary adenoma. They are releasing a lot of ACTH, which releases in turn a lot of cortisol, and that's why you get bilateral adrenal hyperplasia. The only difference is that the ACTH is not coming from the pituitary, but from an ectopic source, something in your lungs or in your bronchioles you don't even know about. The, f the way U.S. Emily asks is that this person has been smoking for 45 years and has been coughing a lot and comes to you with abdominal stry. That's when you got to sort of make the connection. All right. So now we know all the four different ways these present. But you still have similarities in them. So you've got to know exactly how to diagnose the cause, right? For that, we have two main tests, the CRH stimulation test and the high dexamethasone test. So that's what we're going to talk about now.